Hey, what is happening? You sauteed sauce, but coming at you with a wild build of Roaring Moon. Now, this was piloted by Shuma Kikuchi, who got second place at the Champions League Kyoto. The Champions League are tournaments held in Japan, and they have roughly usually 3,000 players. I don't think it's been released how many players were at this one, but I'm, my guess is that's going to be probably around 3,000 3, players. So huge tournament, Roaring Moon, a deck that I've written off for a while now as not being a top deck took second place uh, and the list is pretty interesting so let's take a look at it let's get into it uh, it's definitely the most fun i've had with the roaring moon deck as well this is by far like i picked it up uh playing some roaring moon the other day and i tried out this build and i was like hey this is just fun this is the most this is the most fun i've ever had playing roaring moon um, and that's because it's got some unique cards in it namely the cross Seaver, which allows you to play two of them at the same time and if you do you can get a pokemon which i actually figured out the other day i thought you could just get a supporter when you play two at the same time because you also get pokemon and that does come up sometimes where you want to recover pokemon instead of a supporter card but the main function of playing this in the deck for sure is recovering those supporter cards um and the way we kind of combo this and make it kind of work and flow in the deck is we play dark ride v-star with the v-star power star abyss during your turn you may why is the ability above the attack is that usually how this looks during your turn you may put two item cards from your discard pile into your hands who are able to discard them early whether that be with squawkabilly or ultra balls and then recover them later to utilize them to help us find a supporter so turn star abyss into a basically do all ability uh, so there's only a 1-1 dark ride v-star in here so we're praying we don't prize our v-star but if it happens it happens so yeah it basically turns the star abyss into a do all ability where we can use the star abyss to recover cross switchers there are so cross switchers in here so we got all the crosses in this deck cross switchers cross receivers so we can use the star abyss to recover cross switchers as an aggressive gust effect alongside playing Silas vitality return or we could use the star abyss to maybe recover a uh, cross receiver because we have one cross receiver in our hand and then we play two cross receivers to get our iono and then play our iono for turn and then you know disrupt our opponent's hand and maybe also play two cross switchers alongside that and gust on that turn as well uh, and that all combos super super well with pokey stop pokey stop allowing us to aggressively draw through our deck and keep our item cards we do discard our other cards, but we set up most of our Pokemon on turn one. We don't mind Dark Energy being in our discard pile. And because of the Cross Seaver, we actually don't mind as much our supporters getting discarded from the Pokestop. In fact, it helps enable our Cross Seaver. So if we have Cross Seavers in our hand, or we have the Dark Ride V-Star in play and have access to the Star Abyss, then we could Pokestop, mill away our boss or an Iono or a Professor Sato. So hopefully we play this Professor Sato's at that point. And then Cross Seaver for the supporter and then play the supporter for turn so it's just a really cool the way the deck flows and feels uh and the combos in the deck that you can pull off it just is super cool i love this build this is by far my favorite way to play roaring moon it's not even remotely close is it the best way to be honest i don't know i haven't really played that much with roaring moon but if i was going to show up tomorrow and play in a tournament with roaring moon it would be this 60 cards the only thing i'd maybe do is i kind of wish there was an escape rope especially with star abyss an escape rope is kind of cool. You do have the cross switcher, so it doesn't feel necessary, but I definitely had multiple situations with this deck where I was like, an escape rope would make things flow a little bit better, but I can put in the extra work to make the cross switcher play happen or make the boss's orders play happen. So I'd maybe cut the switch uh, or the switch card. I'm actually not sure which one which one I would cut. Probably the switch for an escape rope. That's like the only adjustment I would maybe make. Maybe also cutting an S ball for the fourth ultra ball as well, because Finding the Dark Ride V-Star is like super important and it really enables your plays. And then also finding Luminian can be pretty important as well. So that's the only other adjustment I would consider as well. But if you're just going to pick this up and try it out, I would start here and kind of work your way from there. But yeah, super sick build of Roaring Moon. I can't say it enough. I'm not going to go over any of the other big parts about the deck because that is the big parts about the deck. Uh, so before we jump into some action, I can show y'all how this deck pilots compared to other builds of Roaring Moon. Gotta give a shout out and let y'all know about Game Grid SLC's holiday sale they got going on, and then they also have Paldean Fates available for pre-order. That'll be our January set. We're getting that at the end of January. So if you want some Paldean Fates or you want to check out what they got on sale for the holiday sale, check them out, GameGridSLC.com. Of course, link will be in the description as always, and you can use code ZULGG over there as well to get yourself a discount. And with that said, let's jump into some action with the Cross Seaver Dark Ride V Star Roaring Moon build. All right, mirror match. I wonder if they're well, they're not. They have the Moltres V. What about failing roar of the sword every turn against control? Uh, that's fine. Because like theoretically, uh, is that fine? 
failing it i don't know i guess failing it would be weird i don't know if you can do that to be honest at some point if the action is not progressing the board state and the information is doesn't change like theoretically depending on what you top deck each turn that might make you want to ha use roar of the sword or not use roar of the sword but if no if it doesn't change enough then um um if 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 the information gained each turn isn't enough then then they do uh yeah Draw out a penalty for Guru into chops every turn, which does progress the board state. Okay, yeah. Well, that one that one sounds like it shouldn't end up in a warning because you are top decking a new card and shuffling potentially the new card back to the deck every single time. So I feel like that one shouldn't lead to a warning. I don't like the idea of that leading to a warning. Um, yeah. But I could see like if you... Huh. I want to escape up or double cross switcher, but now I have a cross switcher in my hand. All right, do this. Get Billy. Billy better be here or we're screwed. I'm honestly tempted to get the more Peko, but probably should get Greninja. Yeah, we probably should get the Greninja. I could switch into the Greninja at the very least, though, right? Yeah, sure. Walk and seize away a cross switcher. Oh, wait, there's no escape rope in this list. What am I talking about? Maybe I should have ripped the stop first to try and get double cross switcher. Probably not happening there. All right. Greninja first, then stop. Because I want to get double moon here. Stop first. Yeah, because I want to get double moon. That's the whole enchilada right there. Okay, hold up. Let me cook. Okay. So I guess I'm just hoping they don't have the gust on their end, right? Well, I can even vacuum the stop. But I do be kind of liking that play. Hold up, more shoes. Does get Dark Rye. Um. Does get cro Dark Rye that gets Cross Switcher. That's pretty good. I think I'm gonna take that. Put on this. Put on Dark Rye. Catch here. Or I keep that actually. I have zero energy in here. I think I have to keep this actually. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have to keep this, right? There's no shot. I could vacuum that. Give it the cross receiver, I guess. Do I keep that? No. Give it the cross receiver. I'm down with that. Not getting attachment for turn kind of sucks, but we should have excess energy anyway, so we should be okay. All right, now the question is, do they have double cross or KO my Roar and Moon? That would kind of suck, so I really hope they don't get that. But if they do get it, actually, they wouldn't even KO with the Roar and Moon. They KO my Dark right here. That's what they would KO. We just hope they don't get that. <clears throat> I've heard that sometimes, uh, like, setting up dice for damage before your opponent declares an attack can be considered rushing. Is that actually a thing or just some bull? I could see it. Um... Yeah, I th but I think it. Uh, yeah, I think it depends if you're just doing it naturally or you're doing it with like very the uh, very much the obvious intent that you're trying to like rush your opponent. I think that would be like the di there could be like a differential there for sure. It would be weird if that was a a thing like that though. It doesn't feel like it should be, but town store build. It was okay. It wasn't like anything. It didn't feel like. This build feels way cooler because it's just way cooler. Losing my Greninja here honestly kind of sucks. Maybe I could have attached or treated my Greninja to the more Pico to try and keep my Greninja, actually. Oh, maybe that was the play, actually. Wait, what the heck? I should have done that, right? So I'm just going to try and go double cross switcher, right? Double cross switcher KO. I mean, maybe the Moltres now. Oh, I need a stadium, though, actually. Oh, I could double cross switcher KO this. They should not have put this in play. This being weak to dark is actually, like, a pretty big misplay from them, to be honest. Yeah, they should not have put... I don't know why they put the Mew in play. <laughs> they shouldn't have done that. They should not have done that. That's not very good. Yeah, I think I'm looking for the double cross switcher KO. If I go with the... Unseed Gougie on their active, then they can more Pico KO this, which I don't want to give them. Or Greninja KO it as well, I guess. I don't want to give them that, so I'd like to just go KO this thing. Or ideally this, because I want to get rid of the Force Seal Stone, but... Okay, that's pretty good. 
Ooh. Well, makes things a little bit more difficult. To be prizing my Pokemon. All right. dark in here it's super odd that I don't know if that's correct though I can super add it back in though indubitably I don't want to use my dark patches yet though I feel like <clears throat> a stop is that worth it though I just gave them the stop oh no I don't like that though well, now I have to frenzy gouging though which sucks I'm getting the first two prize knockout. Okay, I mean, it could work out though, right? It should, well, you know what? Actually, it is gonna work out. Everything's gonna be great. We're fine, we're fine. <sighs> so will we ever get uh, some info into what your spreadsheet's about or is anything, is it entirely top secret? I mean, it's not entirely top secret, but I basically already put out all the info anyone would ever need. Like, it's not, it's not something that's like that uh, complicated either though. Pretty much anyone can make it pretty reasonably if they want to. All right, this is a dub. <clears throat> this is a dub for sure. Not gonna set up more Pico. Bro, they better set up more. If they don't set up more Pico here, they're trolling. I mean, will they be able to? I guess is the question, right? Is it dead? It's not dead. Yeah, honestly, we maybe just win on board. <laughs> we maybe just win. It's possible. We'll see. We just get to save our Darkrai for the win, right? We just evolve to the Darkrai. We triple, evolve to Darkrai, triple Dark Patch, Frenzy Gouging. Like, how do we lose that? That's unlosable. That's a dub. That's a dub right there. Ride back Luminian. Maybe the Greninja as well. I don't know about that one, but maybe. Honestly, I'm really liking the Darkrai. I'm not sold on the, what are they called? I'm not sold on these. The cross receivers I'm not sold on. I'm becoming sold on the Darkrai though. But the last time I tested the Darkrai, I did not like it. I tested Dark right at the beginning of the um uh you have an automatic spreadsheet using Excel functions or whatever or do it manually. I honestly don't know. I don't I didn't Caleb made the spreadsheet. Caleb does all this stuff with the spreadsheet. I think the answer is it is automatic, yes. <clears throat> yeah, I would assume it is, yes. I would assume it is, but my answer is actually, I don't know. That was the brains. Hey, I tell, I say which numbers go into the spreadsheet. That's not true. We all, we all contribute to which numbers should go in the spreadsheet. But. Maybe baby monsters could be good for this deck. No. I don't think it ever makes sense to have something like the Baby Moltres. <clears throat> Probably was nice for late game Gus. I mean, it's, it's good for a lot of situations, to be honest, but I, it just feels so weird to play. That card is like such a bad card, but like maybe it does just work. I mean, if you got Pokestop and Darkrai, like maybe it does make sense. Um, get this. this. Stop. I'm down. So what do we got? All right, goodbye. I didn't even want that. Can I put that back? <laughs> Can I put that back in the discard pile? Classic triple dark patch action. You know how it is. Rod, like the squad. Wait, should I just carry the active here? I was going to KO this. Yeah, let's KO this. Bump the stadium. Honestly, I don't... Does it matter? I'm going to do this play. I'm going to do this play. I don't think it matters, though, right? There's like a million ways we win the game from here. So, like, we'll just take this one. we got a billion ways to win. We'll just do this one. If you don't know how this spreadsheet works, Caleb could be fudging the numbers if he wants. Oh, there's no way he would do that, though. No shot. Back when Moon first came out, I liked Moltres over Darkrai. It felt like the consistency a lot. Moltres is okay. The problem with... I mean, to be honest, like, not playing the E-Switch just feels kind of cool. Um, 
Yeah, not playing e-switches. I like the idea of just not playing the e-switches. And we just, this, it's just like so much more room in the deck to do some cheesy stuff, but. Um, so I'm kind of down with the no e-switch build. If you play e-switches, I think you should play water energy. But if you're not gonna play e-switches, you don't have to play the water energy, obviously. Or you shouldn't play the water energy. I don't think, I don't think being able to attack with Greninja is necessary in the deck. I do like the idea of it. I do think if you play e-switch, you should play water energy though, I guess. You should definitely, that, that. If you're gonna play e-switches, you should play water, but the no e-switch honestly feels a little bit, we have more, we have more room in the deck for just like other stuff. It feels kind of clean. I don't know. I mean, I don't see how we ever lose this game. I'm pretty sure this game is over. Um, can't think of anything they could do. Yep, that's a dub. That's a dub. All right. We still get it, yeah. Oh, we're up against Mew. If it's fusion, we want to leave a... We need to leave a one-prizer in the active. We need to ideally leave a one-prizer in the active. All right, sure, sure, sure. I think giving them Kogi Sabo Raw is probably going to be fine as well. All right, so switch card is what we're looking for here. I am going to S-Ball for another Roaring Moon as well. Just hold on to the Ultra Ball. Switch cards. Only one in there. Pretty un unlikely to get it, but we'll try. such luck all right well if they got the turn one meloetta it's gonna be tough to be honest if they got the turn one melee it's gonna be tough i don't know if i should get all this energy to be honest that actually might be incorrect i mean i guess i want to increase my top deck odds a little bit here maybe i don't mind playing for that all right we'll see how it goes Melon is a bad plan that isn't going to get you there. Yeah, Melon's not a good answer. I honestly, I think, uh, I honestly think, well, yeah, Charmeleon I don't think is gonna get you there. You have to attack with like four Charmeleons. I don't think Zard has a great answer. I mean, it's, it wouldn't be hard for them to tech for Vulpix. But I think currently there's not a great, like there's not just not a natural game plan in, uh, there's not a natural game plan in Charizard. Um, Uh, there's not a natural game plan. Catcher boss. Catcher boss is the only, that's the only thing I guess. Yeah. Counter catcher boss is the only thing. That's true. That's true. Counter catcher boss is a play. That's it though, right? It's the only, the only thing to do. Um, if passes in play, does Vulpix have that immunity of the rule box ability months? No. So that gets around it as well. <clears throat> that does get around it as well. Yeah, there's no nat there's no natural oh well, the natural game plan of boss cat counter catcher but i don't know that's kind of weird I, I don't know if that works because you have to let them draw prize cards and build like build up damage in play and maybe draw prize cards before you do anything you can maybe just lose the prize trade at that point i have to like test it i guess to see if it works um i guess the question is as well is like can you get down to like lone vulpix uh is that possible if you can get down to lone vulpix then that'd be something for sure because then they can't do the counter catcher boss play. But that sounds kind of hard to get down to Lone Vault picks. Um. <clears throat> so it doesn't have a game plan for Stall as well, or does it? No, not really. Oh, you do have a line. You have a uh, Vitality Ban, Boss KO Rotom, Vacuum the Bravery Charm if you have to, and then attack with your other goons from there. Charmeleon or Zard, if it's a Snorlax or a Mimikyu. But you just auto lose to the Pidgeot build. So if it's control with Pidgeot, you just lose. There's no win condition, I don't think. Um, yeah. Yeah, you just lose to that. There's no, I don't think you have a win condition for that scenario, but I don't, I guess I'm not 100% confident. I just, I'm pretty sure you don't have a win condition for that, for that situation. Um, <clears throat> The Pidgeot build's too tough to beat, I think. If they get up Pidgeot, they can just quick search for whatever they want every single turn. And that's like too too much. Then you just lose. Um, but if it is, you could always, like you could tech for it theoretically. But, um, tech for it theoretically. 
if it's the non Pidgeot build. All right, that's a pretty good draw. Quick stop rip into a cross switch. Wait, can I do something with the cross over here? Hold up. Oh, I have no supporters in here? Dude. Oh, wait. <laughs> Yo, this is about to go crazy. The cross Eaver for the dark rye. The dark rye for the cross switcher. Bro. That's insane. Well, we got to do it now if we're going to do it, right? That's so dumb. <laughs> That's so dumb. We do it though, right? There's no reason not to do it. And then we can actually attack with the Darkrai here. Darbus. Cross switcher. And... Is how many Dark Energy are in here? Hold up. Two. We'll go for a Dark Patch then, I guess. Sure. We can, we can attack with... Yeah, we can attack with Darkrai here. Dude, that is so... <laughs> that's so dumb. Uh, I don't know if it should go here or here. We'll just go with that. Split them up a little bit. I'll get rid of the choice spell here so the dark rye is less likely to die. I just hit him with an Iono. That is so dumb. Alright, what do we got? Ooh, more shoes. Um I would like to get an energy in the discard pile and then use. I honestly don't think I need cross switcher anymore. Am I gonna regret getting rid of this? I don't Oh I said yes. God damn it. I guess I do kinda want that. Well, whatever. I didn't do anything. I was hoping to get a dark energy in the discard pile, like see an ultra ball or discard one and then use the dark patch. I would have liked to have done that. So I think it's correct to have played the directing shoes there, but I should have just, I think I should have discarded the cross switcher. I don't know what I need another cross switcher for. I don't think I need another cross switcher. I don't know. Maybe on next turn, I'll be glad I have it, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, the Sada is nice though. I can't, I can't really complain about having a Sada, so I don't mind keeping the Sada. Yeah, dude, the double cross there is so sick. <laughs> the double cross there is so sick. Optimal have discarded our Dark Rye V-Star, of course, because we knew we were going to draw into the double double cross Seaver. And it's such a, that's such a better name. That that name flows so much. I thought it was called Cross Receiver, but it is just called Cross Seaver. It's one word, Cross Seaver. It, that flows so much better. I'm glad it's called that and not Cross Receiver, to be honest. Belt Tablet. Belt 2 Tablet for KO here. I mean, I assume. I don't know what else they'd want to do. But that's fine with me. Back him with a moon. Honestly, in this situation, it's probably correct for them. Uh, does that really matter, I guess? Well, I guess they want to... Oh, they got their own cross switchers. Would you look at that? Oh, they're going to go after this. Does that actually even make sense? How much am I doing right now? 120, 150. I guess, like, theoretically, if I don't have a Sada or a Dark Patch. Attachment for turn. Actually, no, this does kind of make sense for them. Yeah, because attachment for turn means Dark Ride doesn't KO Mew VMAX. This could be their way to get back ahead and or back into the game, I guess. It's reasonable. Definitely seems reasonable. I have my last moon in the deck. I do not mind though. Yeah, we, we should be able to load up as much energy, or we should be able to load up enough energy in play though to like just win the game on the next turn, no matter what. Um, I mean, this isn't gonna work. Well, actually, have they played it? No, they haven't played a support yet. Actually, this could work still. Hold up, hold up. Because I thought they'd already played a supporter, but they haven't. And now my hand sucks. Dude, no way. Is this going to work? Now I'm tilted. <laughs> it could actually work. Hold up. What do we have left? I could boss KO the Mew V this turn. Okay. Boss KO Mew V this turn. What did I KO last turn? Mew V? Did I double cross switcher that? Wait, didn't I double cross switcher? Oh, I did, but I was attacking with Dark Rider. That's why I did that. I was like, wait, why didn't I just KO a Genesect? Um, okay. I can boss KO this. Did they need that? Oh, they did. That was the second tablet. Dude, so lucky. What the heck? Okay. Dark Rider KO. It's actually kind of getting scary. Dude, this is actually losable. Bro, Mew is such a disgusting deck, bro. How is it beating Moon Darkrai? They're not winning, but I'm I'm nervous. Um, I'm right, hit him with this first. I need something here. Or I need to get closer to something. Okay. I don't have a cross heaver left. Do 
this, get rid of this. These. What do I have left? Oh, I have no Pokemon left? Where'd they go? They're all dead. Um, okay. All right, that opens up some interesting choices here because I can attack with the moon then say boss for this thing to KO this. They did just, they did get rid of their third Mew VMAX. So I have a ton of Sada left. I have four Sada left. <laughs> I have four Sada left. How many cross switches do I have left? Just two, one boss. I'm gonna put energy there. I'm honestly thinking about going one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could KO this, but I don't want to. I don't want to draw a third prize card and then get Iono lower, right? They're, well, they are down Iono Palpad, so I don't think they can Iono me anymore, anyways. So maybe I do want the extra prize card. I don't know what's prize though, but I'd want to go with the boss here to be honest and keep the cross switchers. Maybe I do just draw the extra price. Or do I take out a Genesect and reduce their draw power? But they could just have another Genesect. But it could be prized, so they might not be able to find it. I can't do that, actually. Uh, let's just draw one less prize card in case of a second I know. Oh, wait! I did it again, bro. <laughs> I did it again! More Pico! All right. I, dude, I... God damn it, more Pico. More Pico's in a hurry, bro? Yeah. Shoot, that's so bad. I wanted two energy on the more Pico here. Yeah, I wanted two energy on the more Pico here. Because like, if they go chase, chase a one prizer here, I never lose. If they go chase my more Pico for turn, I literally can't lose the game. <clears throat> God damn it, you bastard. I had the Switch card in hand, too. I literally could just play the Switch card and moved the more pico i literally could have just switch carded the more pico okay so i should have just i should have retreated first i honestly maybe i probably should have burned the switch card anyways i don't think i care about switch card anymore um because dude he's just mad in general he's just pissed bro he like he's like he's pissed he had to show up for work <sighs> okay that's a silene what are they getting well nothing apparently <laughs> All right, we just win now. Now there's no way we lose, unless I throw. I'd have to throw to lose at this point. <clears throat> yeah, I'd literally have to... Dude, this build feels so fun. Like, I, I still don't think it's that good. I don't think Roaring Moon's that good, to be honest, though. Like, this hasn't changed my mind on Roaring Moon. But this has definitely been the most enjoyable build of Roaring Moon I've ever played. Maybe it's because of the novelty of the Cross Seaver. That could be part of it, for sure, to be honest. It's kind of the novelty of the Cross Seaver. But honestly, like, I'm, I'm really enjoying playing this build of Moon. Like, this is just, like, enjoyable to play. Whereas, like, other builds of Moon are kind of just annoying. Like, they're just, like, so, like, it's, like, they're not bad. Like, they're not terrible, but it's just, like, not enjoyable to play. Um, I honestly think it's just, like, the Cross Seavers is, like, what makes it enjoyable. What else can we put Cross Seaver in is the question now. What else could I play Cross Seaver in? What other, what other quad Pokestop decks could we cook up? Like, four Pokestop, four. We don't need Cross Switchers. Although, I'm not against the idea of the Cross Switchers. Dude, my first Sada. <laughs> pow? Yo, pow? Well, I could see it. I could see it. I could see it for sure. All right, it's another dub. Okay, okay. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. I have no energy in my hand though, so we gotta go. I mean, we gotta we gotta squawk on them. Two, two. It's rough. I mean, they play four Pokestop of their own. Maybe I should just like throw it out there because I need a setup as well. I also need to make sure I can move my Squawk ability. All right. I need to do this. I need to do that. <clears throat> okay, this first two Moon prized. No, we only play this list. Only plays three Moon. It plays a Super Rod because um, we need to recover our Dark Rod, and then we also have the Cross Range Transceivers as well. So we just need we need less. I mean, to be honest, I kind of want to cross receiver here so I can get a Sada. Okay, that's okay. You can save on its fodder. And I want this on the bench. I honestly also don't care if it's on the bench. 
switch into this guy for sure. Um, I mean, they don't like ever play Iono, right? I don't think so. I mean, they could. I don't know. I'm um, sure. <clears throat> All right, we'll see if this works. Which moon, moon build do you like more, E-Switch Ninja or this one with Darkrai? Honestly, this one with the, the Darkrai and the, the Cross Evers is kind of sick. Uh, like, which one do I like more? This one. Which one do I think is best? I don't know. Ever worth working with one collapse? I mean, one collapse is fine, but your, your bench usually has so many liabilities, like it's not gonna actually save you. The thing with collapsed in like decks like this, or the thing with collapsed in decks like this or Maridon is your bench has so many things that are uh, almost equal liabilities that the collapse rarely removes a loss uh win condition for your opponent from the board Jeez, all right calm down um so yeah it rarely like removes a <clears throat> a win condition so but they're not uh it's not bad uh, the almost like the more value you get out of it is like opening up a, a bench space so yeah, it's rare that it actually is the difference between losing or winning the game. Also, you have to find it. So, like, in a build with Pokestops, playing Pokestop and Collapse probably just doesn't ever make any sense because you're just going to mill it. You're going to mill it a lot, and it's not going to matter a lot. So, it's probably just not worth ever play. Dude, oh, they didn't even use Sada yet? Dude, I'm getting there. What is this? Let's cook. All right. That's, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Tails. Come on, Tails. All right. <clears throat> what do you think about Turbo Ride on for Charlotte? Uh, I mean, it's fine. Fine. Uh, for oh, for Charlotte. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, I'd, I'd play. I would just aim on playing. You can wait and see how Portland goes. Maybe like Maridon or Charizard gets super hard countered at Portland, and it's like no longer like that big of a <clears throat> threat in the meta. Um, but if it is, then I would definitely like aim to play. The build of Maradon you think has the best Charizard matchup. So yeah, that would be that would that's my recommendation around Maridon is <clears throat> play the build of Maridon that you think has the best uh Charizard matchup. Should be the goal. Charizard's pretty good. And it's kind of the most popular deck, so. Okay, love to see that. That's not something you see every day. Over the more Pekka. What else we got in here? I need a dark energy. <clears throat> Do I got a hella dark patch in there too? <clears throat> Honestly, I do want this. <laughs> Honestly, I do want this. Um, I think I'm about to say no on this one. I'm about to pass. Okay. Honestly, that recovers the other moon, though. I get an energy? Okay, thank goodness. Um, I just need Sada's from here. So honestly, this being able to cover one cross Seaver for a Sada, plus this being able to get Sada. I think get rid of the Iono here. The Iono seems like it sucks, <clears throat> to be honest. I feel like I never find dark patches with this deck. I feel like they're like, they elude me. Um, should I rip the stop now or next turn? I'm already down two stops. I kind of wouldn't mind dark patching to this thing right now. I'm not going to bump the stop back. So I maybe would rather do it on a turn where I'm bumping the stop. I'm going to use Frenzy Gouging here. But I don't have any energy left in the deck. Because I don't have any energy left in the deck. But I could play for a cross switcher play next turn. But I could stop this turn and next turn possibly. <clears throat> but then I'm... Well, I'm not bumping the stop, but they're going to bump the stop. The stop's not going to be in play next turn. But I could get my other stop and put it in play. That's two two stops over two turns. Okay, I'll use the stop. I convinced myself. Talked myself into it on that one. Could have gone for a cross switcher play. <clears throat> this is probably fun. We might go for the cross switcher on the Mew next turn and knock that out instead. What is that like insanely long attack animation there? That's crazy. Just saw a moon scissor build without VIP. I think it's crazy, dude. <laughs> what evens the Zard matchup? I don't know. <clears throat> I haven't tried too much with the ride on recently. They want you to 
appreciate the gouge, I guess, yeah. What do you think the new Ancient and Future Pokemon coming next set? Uh, we're, we're gonna take a look at them a little bit here and talk about them a little bit on stream. Um, I mean, some of them look interesting though, for sure. I've looked at all of them. I haven't really thought about them though. Do you think it's crazy Charger will have nine different arts? I think that is a little wild and a little bit weird, but. <clears throat> Top of Coco EX and hope they don't switch. The Top of Coco EX, I don't know if it's a good a good tech moving forward, but it was definitely was a good tech. Um, like for San Antonio, it was honestly probably the play was to play Top of Coco. For sure.